one thing I always try to say is I try not to like move off emotion because mm -hmm. moving off emotion you will make some stupid decisions life changing decisions by reacting off of anger mm -hmm. being emotional uh, reacting super fast instead of being able to um, sit back and take time to process yeah. what just happened yeah. and then once you cool down and you get your thoughts together then reacting mm -hmm. that's one of the biggest uh, things that I've noticed that black men in therapy struggle with is slowing down. It's processing a little bit slower than most uh, because the first thing we want to do is we want to react. And we have to learn how to slow down because we can get ourselves in some deep trouble when we start to just, just act. And we can't do that. We need to think and process what's actually happening. In order for us to do that is that we got to understand that we're dealing with some other things as well. It's best for us to know ourselves and know what we deal with and know how we struggle. If we can't identify with that, when it's time to uh, address something or when it's time to get involved with a relationship, we find ourselves impulsively acting, which leads to us saying sorry. Well, here's the problem with sorry. The action has already been done. And so we have to be careful that we don't have to go back and apologize. My granddad used to say, if you're going to do it right, do it right the first time. So if you do it right the first time, you don't have to go back for an apology, and then that person don't actually have to feel that emotion. 99% of the time when you react or act off emotion, it will be wrong. You've heard people talk about the, the adrenaline just got pumping, and I just did this, I did that. Well, the adrenaline can put you in a big, pro, a big situation, bad situation where you struggle to even get through that situation without uh, lashing out, without having these outbursts. And so we have to be careful that we don't act that way. And that's one of the issues that I'm coming, I'm starting to find when we're when I'm addressing the black man is that we are quick. It's the temper. I remember when I joined the military and as in basic training. Everything that the drill sergeant told me to do, I was snapping and then didn't know that there was a consequence behind it. Here I am, 21 years old, and didn't understand the consequence of my reaction. And so over the time, he taught me that you cannot use your temper as a weapon. And that's what I did. And I, and I didn't know that it was a weapon at, the point, at that time, but I quickly realized that it was a weapon. And so we have to be careful that our temper don't get the best of us because it does affect relationships. It, it, it affects how we treat our kids, uh, raise our kids. It, it affects how we interact with people in general. So, yes, it's not always a black or white thing, but it is a, a, a issue where, as black men, we struggle with controlling that, issue, that part of us. is our anger. Our anger is what gets us in trouble. And so... A um, little bit about me when it comes to anger. I've told you, and I've said many times before, that I dealt with uh, anger issues. And this may be an overlap with episodes to come, but I, I got to talk about it because it really um, lends credence to what I'm talking about today with the anger. So as a young uh, person, I grew up without a father like most or, you know, a great percentage of young black men. I grew up without a father. And my father lived within two blocks from me. Knew, he knew where I lived. I didn't know where he lived until later on, but he knew. He knew who I was. He, he knew everything about me. But he never once stopped. He never once stopped by the house and said, hey, you know, I'm going to take you out for ice cream. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And so for me... I was angry. I was ang I was furious because he. How can you, as a father, pass by your son's house and not speak, or not even come in and say, "Hey, want to sit out and talk? Let me explain." You know, here I am, 12, 13 years old, fig trying to figure out who is who. I had my grandfather didn't have an education, couldn't read or write, but he taught me how to get up in every morning, go to work, do your thing, come home, take care of the family just by looking, but he couldn't sit down with me and have a conversation with me about life. He couldn't tell me about girls. He couldn't tell me how to behave in front of certain people. So that right there had me to a point where I felt like he didn't want me, and what am I to do? I'm young, didn't, want to, didn't, want to father, didn't have a father. I'm like, wow, I guess this way it's supposed to be. So, you know, years later, I began to know who my, my, my siblings were. 
and I would play basketball with my older brother, and he knew who I was, I knew who he was, but we just kind of never spoke about it. But we just knew who, we, who each other was. But what happened was I got upset with him and my other siblings because what happened, I felt like they were in the house with my dad. And they got everything from him, and I got nothing. So now I'm angry with them. They don't even know. Yeah, you know, it's not even their fault. They just kids that's just put here. That's it. And my older my older brother told me he said, you know what, you get mad at me and and the rest of us because you think that um, you didn't get a chance to spend time with dad. Well, he was in the house with us, and it was like he wasn't even there. That right there got the wheels turning for me. It's like, wow. So he was in the house with them, and he still didn't act like a father. So as a therapist, now thinking about it, though, I'm like, was it a generational thing? Yeah. You know, did he have to deal with that with his father? Or did his father have to deal that with that with his grandfather? So I'm looking at it like a generational thing. It's like, okay, so I, had, I need to break the cycle. Yeah. So I thought, okay, well, I'm going to break the cycle with that. It didn't stop there. It, it delved a little bit deeper because then I found myself, I'm in northern Louisiana going to high school, and everything is segregated. This, we're talking about the 90s now, and we had a black queen and, uh, king and queen. We had a white king and queen. In the they, high school? In the high school. This is in the 90s now. Oh, wow. And so I'm dealing with, like, okay, this is racism. You know, why do we got to be separate? So immediately I'm getting mad again. So all these other things that are in, injected into my life started to make me angry. The one thing that really drove me over the edge, my grandfather was uh, about 6'2", black as you can get him. I mean, you can call him purple. That's how black he was. Rough around the edges, wore overalls, worked, but kind-hearted. We went to the store one day. And I'm 13 years old. We went to the store one day, and I see my classmate, and um, he's a white. He was a white. He was a white kid, and uh, he says, uh, "My granddad says to him, sir, can you do this?'" Now he talking to this 13 year old white kid, sir, can I get this and get that? He calls my granddad Otis, calls him by his first name. He said, "Otis, you can get this and get that." And I'm looking at him, and I'm like, I'm ready to go tear into this, this young kid because he, my granddad gave him respect, but he couldn't even give him respect. And my granddad, he said, look, son, you can't do that. That's not how you solve things. Furious. Mm -hmm. All of that anger started to come up. Here I am, 25 years old. All that stuff started to manifest itself. So you were mad because he just didn't call him sir? I, I was mad because he didn't respect them. I mean, was that? Well, you know what? I, I had a I have a story. One time, I called a girl house and her dad picked up the phone. I was like thirteen, like mm -hmm. I was in the eighth grade, I think. Mm -hmm. And he wanted me to call him sir, and I just hung up the phone. And I'm like, I'm not. I I've never. I don't think I ever called someone sir. Right. Before at that age. Well, I mean, obviously that's a different time. Right. Back then, where right. he was from, but. I never called anybody sir, so when he wanted me to call him sir, I just hung up the phone. I'm like, Bro, I don't call anybody sir, ma'am, so why would I do that? And I remember he called back, and, uh, well, the girl called back, and he was in the background cursing me out, and I, could never, and I never got a chance to date that girl. Yeah. And I regret that for a long time, because... You gotta, you gotta, you gotta know the con. You gotta know the context of the situation because here I am coming from Rockford, right? Yeah. I'm coming from Rockford. I'm like you. We didn't say sir. We don't say sir up here. We like whatever, you know. And and when I got there to that school, I found myself in the office day after day because I wouldn't call a teacher. I wouldn't say sir, ma'am to a teacher. So now here I am. Oh, so y'all, that was, that was just taught. Like, that's it was taught, you. yeah, it was, it was taught because I wasn't used to doing that, but I was starting to get in trouble at school because I wasn't saying sir and ma'am and all that so kind of stuff. It makes sense. Yeah, that you were, right, 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 right. So the context, is, is, it, it is a little different because they expected that of me when I first got there. And so now I'm like, wait a minute. It's, 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 Grandpa Otis, you like yeah, him. yeah. And I'm like, my granddad paid his dues. He did this and, you know, you should respect him. But what I'm, what I'm getting at is that 
it caused so much anger in me that it came and manifested. Here I am, 25 years old, and all of this stuff is starting to manifest. The ideology of me, of a black man, is where it come from, where it started from. And what happened to me can happen to any black man dealing with these experiences yeah. and how we function after the fact. So, you know, that's the question that we have to ask ourselves. Where do it come from? And that's part of our healing process yeah. is understanding and recognizing where it comes from. So just past trauma. And it, it, it definitely could be past trauma, which that's going to be, you know, the next episode. We're going to talk about that trauma is that. Uh, things that happen to us, they don't just go away. They don't just kind of go back into the sunset and say, I'll see you later. They go and they stay there until something triggers it. And then once that happens, then that, that anger comes back up as if it's fresh, yeah. as, if it's, as if it's brand new. So what do you think happens to the black man that never goes and get the help? 